I'm Mark Nugent and I uh, restore and, and fabricate vintage and classic car bodies. I started off as an apprentice at Concourse Sports Car Restorations in Sydney and we used to build and restore uh, Jaguar and Aston Martin bodies there. And then once I became a tradesman, I, I, I left there and I, I moved to London and worked for a professional coach building shop in London called Craveville Coach Builders, who um, have been around since, since the early 70s and 60s. I came back to Australia and set up um, in my hometown where I was born here in Dubbo. And, um, and that was about 13 years ago. And, um, and we've been flat out ever since. <laughs> coach building has been around really, it, it has its roots, you know, in carriages, horse-drawn carriages, and that's been around for, you know, 400, 500 years, or, you know, back to the Roman era, really. And so when the automobile, you know, really first came on the scene in 1886, you know, when Carl Benz, um, you know, invented, uh, you know, combustion engine, you know, they, carriage makers uh, were, were then thrust into basically building carriages on, on, on combustion engine automobiles. And so during, you know, during the next 50 years, you know, right through to the, um, you know, the, the, the 1910, 1920s, 1930s, 1940s, um, you know, the coach builders were a separate entity from, from, from car manufacturers themselves. When you bought a car in the 1930s and the 1920s, you didn't necessarily buy the body. You know, you had, it, you had to have it bodied by a, um, a coach builder from an outside source. So, and, um, so coach building, you know, in, in a sense, is, is, is a standalone trade. With most of the stuff that we do in here as well, I mean, we'll be approached by a client you know, that has an original car that is either missing its body or the body is in need of complete restoration or rebuild. And we, um, you know, we'll take it on, um, you, know, when we're, you know, when we can fit it in. And so the process starts, if it is a complete rebuild from scratch and it needs a new body, it starts with drawings, it starts with photographs, it starts with, you know, CAD drawings. You know, if original drawings do exist of the car, you know, great, you know, makes my job a lot easier, but many of the cars that we've done, they don't. Um, so, you know, we're basically, you know, we're basically starting from scratch, you know, nearly every time. We've been fabricating this car for probably two and a half years, and it's, it's, it's just about finished. We probably have about, uh, probably about six or eight weeks left on the car, I suppose. With the chassis dimensions and the wheelbase dimensions, um, I drew up uh, a one-fifth scale of the body, front section, side sections, rear sections, end top sections, all those elevations, which was you know, quite tedious, quite hard, lots of photographs, lots of head scratching. And then after I was happy with the shape, we sent it to, you know, to a company and they'd done it in CAD for us and then we printed it off. And with all those elevations and all those profiles, which were, which were many profiles through the body at intervals of about 200 mil all the way through the body, we cut those out in paper and then we, we stuck them to, to, to craft wood board and then we traced them out and then we jigsawed all the craft board out with all the, all the elevations all the way through the car and then we basically stuck it all together on a centre rib that ran through the centre of the car. As the car shape starts to evolve, you'll spot things that are not necessarily correct and so you'll change things along the way which comes in, it's hand in hand I think with building anything from scratch. You know, you're not happy with it, you'll go back, you'll change it, you know, you'll make it higher, wider, longer, more shape here, flatter there. And we, we've done that with nearly every car we've ever done in here because you can't really sort of get the shape straight off the bat correct. You know, it's, it, it has to evolve. After the timber frame or the timber buck is made, we'll fabricate the aluminium skin and then we lay it on the timber buck and um, we make it fit it like a glove. And then, you know, there's areas that if we're not happy with it and we want to make it, you know, a little bit wider or a little bit um, more shape here or there, we'll, we'll do that in the aluminium skin. And then we took the aluminium skin off in all of its pieces. It was not welded together at that stage and we pack it all away. And then we made the super legera steel pipe framework and we inlaid that into the wooden buck, you know, to follow all the shape so that we know that we're getting the frame right, staying true to the buck. And then after we're happy with that and it looks really good and it fits really nicely. We chop the timber buck out from the inside and threw it all out. 
So after we've made the steel frame and, and, and the timber butt is being cut away from the chassis, what we do is then we fill in all the little blanks on the inside of the steel frame, which is a lot of pipe work in it. We TIG weld it all together and um, we make everything that opens and shuts, boot lid, um, bonnet, doors, everything. And then when we're happy with that, um, we basically pull the whole car apart, send it off to the sandblaster, get it sandblasted, get it painted black, and, um, and then we get it back here and then we attach all the skin work and all the internal aluminium work on the inside of the cockpit and the engine bay and the rear. And Some of the detail work um, going into this car is the hinges. Uh, firstly, I mean, they are a very bespoke hinge for this car. I've never seen them on any other car. We carved them out of timber and, and we carved it perfectly to, to what the original looks like in, in, in photographs and then we sent it off to a caster and they cast the, uh, the whole six of them for us in, uh, in brass and then we had them machined. They didn't fit like a glove, we had to manipulate them a little bit because of the angles that they go on with the panel work. That was um, quite, quite, quite a big job to, to get all those correct. We've got to make the grill and, uh, and, and, and the windscreen and, and then that's basically it. We've done some small jobs, some medium sized jobs and some, and some very big full jobs like this. This will be the second car that we've made complete, the everything. The car at the back is a Bentley. The owner came to us to create a body style on it that he wanted as an individual sort of a car of his own. We're loosely basing it on a 1934 Voisin. This particular 1934 Voisin is, is a very long and, and low sleek car and there's only one of them in the world. He wants to create something loosely based on that design uh, with a few changes here or there. So we've created a body style on that particular Bentley um, that's very French in its cues. The wheelbase on that car is a little bit shorter and the car is a little bit higher than, than the car that we're basing it on, but we've had to work with that particular chassis to get that shape right. To make that chassis look a lot sleeker, we've brought the body a little bit higher and we've lengthened the wings out, which is the front guards and the rear guards, um, to, to really make it look a lot sleeker because it is an attractive body that we're trying to base it on and um, so far it's successful. Some of the rewards, uh, I, I suppose, are seeing you know, something that you've created. Something that wasn't there before is now there. Some of the negatives of this job is, yeah, it's, after a while it can be very tedious. You know, you can be on a job so long. The finish line, you know, is there, but you're getting there a little bit slower. But I think there's been a real, you know, resurgence in this style of work, you know, especially in the United States. You know, the United States is quite a resurgence with this style of work. And now that technology really, you know, especially when it comes to 3D printing, you know, and, and a lot of, you know, a lot of new things coming out, you know, with, 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 with computer aided designing and all that sort of stuff, I must admit, we've touched on some of those here now. And you know, I was in Italy a few years ago, and and they had you know part of their shop completely dedicated to that, and which was pretty mind blowing to me. It's the first time I'd seen that that technology filtering into this industry, and as you know, that technology like three D printing comes into this industry, it's going to make my job you know a lot easier. But at the same time, I think you've got to know when to distance yourself from it because it's a handmade body and you know you want to stay true to the craft in a sense i mean technology if you know if it was allowed could take over this quite easily i think so you know a handmade body is still going to be a handmade body